All right, welcome to Ask the Experts. It's another exciting episode. I'm Jill Schlesinger. I'm Eric Scharnberg. He's the editor-in-chief. I'm the editor-at-large. And we have a great guest today because it's era of the jobs report, meaning the night before for you non-Jews. And we have Matthew Rothenberg, who might know a little bit about era of the big jobs report. And Matthew writes the moneywatch.com blog, Career Management. He's the editor-in-chief for The Ladders, right. the world's leading online service catering exclusively to the 100K plus job market. So you don't want any trade if you want, you know, if someone makes 50 grand, they don't get to come to you? Um, if they... Uh... They, they are welcome to read all of the wisdom that we can share with them. Um, so but you're, this uh, for is my your career specialty. advice, our specialty is in okay. the six figures. Um, I think there's a lot that, can, that, that those folks can learn as well from what we write. That's, and that's available to everybody. Absolutely. Right. And additional to tra- traditional job search services, the ladders also provides lots of specialized career development resources. So let me start with, uh, before we go even go to the jobs, right, how's how do things look for you? Like, how are you seeing the landscape right now? We're seeing um, we're seeing um, some some new jobs coming into the uh, into the ecosystem. We're uh, we're definitely seeing warmer spots and cooler spots across the country. Yeah, like this isn't um, some of the leading um, some of the leading markets for for us um, are Washington D.C., Baltimore, San Francisco. Hmm. Um, so wait, government. Tech, I have to be like an engineer. Yeah. Like, what about for regular people? Financial services. Okay. Um, um, these are the industries. Mm-hmm. And then there's specialties under those. There's functions under those. Mm-hmm. So in New York, uh, finance has been driving a lot of our technology growth. That's good. Right? Well, That's Eric, perfect. that might mean that uh, financial services back, you know, sort of off that kind of what's wipe out thousands of jobs and everyone's going to leave us and we we have to pay people like the, things are back to normal right well it sure sounds that way i was just uh, watching today on cnbc that uh, ubs is holding back its announcement of bonuses because it's afraid that the bonuses aren't large enough there are not enough zeros after those numbers You're... and so bankers are going to leave is that right is where are theme. they going where are they going uh, boy that is a good question matthew Maybe... where are they going hedge um, funds they're Let's see. There's, uh, they're 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 looking at other opportunities. There are for the first time some other opportunities in some other um, financial uh, institutions. Right. Right. Um, I've been I've been focused down, like I say, a lot on technology recently. Mm-hmm. I write a, I write a column for uh, New York Technologists. Uh-huh. I know there's a lot of mobility there. Um, so. Uh, Retention has been a major issue. Well, wouldn't the world be uh, better so off if all those investment bankers became engineers and got... Yeah, right. why don't we do them? That's that would right. be an excellent right. idea, that's Eric. Right. Job retraining. Yes. All yes. right. <laughs> now, uh, we have tons of questions. Now, if you've got a question, you can always hop onto the website, website at moneywatch.com. We've got a chat room going, so you can comment on the chat room, or you can send us an email, ask the experts at moneywatch.com. So let me, we, we fielded a bunch before you got here because we knew you were coming. Yep. And it is the night before the big jobs report, something like 150,000 jobs about the consensus mm, estimate. And we're hoping. 9.4, 9.5%, still pretty high, Eric. Yeah, I think we need to get above uh, two handle on that, uh, on that new job creation number before we start to bring down the unemployment number seriously. So if it's really going to come down to by a percentage point, it only means there are fewer people looking for work. Yeah, and that's what happened last month. That happens a lot. Some right? people have just out and out given up right, right. now. No, right. Now I'm going to get it, and then I'm going to ask some jobs for the poor people who make less than $100,000, okay? All right, but Michelle says, uh, I am a marketing director with more than 20 years of experience and well-qualified for many vice president's jobs. Mm-hmm. How do I best compete for this position against others who are, who are already VPs? Two years of college, no degree, co-founded four companies. Okay. So titles are rel- relative. Titles are in, in many ways one of the most fungible things that you can, uh, that you can negotiate for. Um, one of the things that we, that we always caution people to be careful about is if they were a very big fish in a very small pond, Mm-hmm. Perhaps an entrepreneur. You don't want to sell yourself as the COO of a three-person company to uh, you know to Procter and Gamble. Right. By the same token, it sounds like she's qualified to be a vice president in all sorts of um, places. What you've got to lead with is a statement of what your core value is. Mm. Core uh, value. That's a so, great thing, right? 
it's it's not about it's not about what uh, the company can do for you. It's about what you can do for the company. Right. Um, if you come in and say, this is the value I'm bringing, this is what my demonstrable uh, history of achievements are, uh, it sounds like this woman has the qualifications that would make her a vice president in many situations. Mm-hmm. And it may not be at a huge company, but it's good to get the title also, right? Absolutely. Matthew, would you define core value? I always think of it as being something a, a, a st- a kind of ethical code, but that's not what you're talking about, I think. Um, We like to say that the more dollar signs and the more percentage signs you can get into your resume, the stronger you are. The more you can quantify, right, even even the things that seem qualitative to start with, the stronger the play Mm -hmm. that you can make. Mm -hmm. If you say, okay, you know, my uh, my creative contribution to this, uh, to to this uh, television team here uh, meant that, you know, my personality meant we only needed one anchor. Uh, I, I saved a saved a whopping 33 mm-hmm. percent. And you and you and you make it something that's like, what am I bringing to the party is what I think about that. Right. Yeah. Like, what am I bringing here? I don't think what's your what's my return on salary? Yeah. yeah right. Now she started businesses. Now, that, that counts for a lot. Now, once again, you got to be careful as an entrepreneur to represent that stuff. Um, in an appropriate way, that you're aware that the scale is different from right. a corporate setting. Right. Because that can set off some alarms for, for employers. But if, if you have a realistic assessment of, of that transition, that's great. That's great stuff. Um, okay. I got a couple of resume questions. Now, mm-hmm. I'm going to ask this to you, Eric, because you get resumes, right? You people yes. who, mm-hmm. um, what the heck was that? <laughs> All right. The, Sally running the board is having some sort of sneezing we'll fit, just, but all right. It's Salud. the season. It's the season. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. Now, okay. high, so. so, Eric, you get all these resumes and you get online resumes, right? You got friends, you got friends of friends. Mm. Um, Cindy wants to know, she says she's submitted several online resumes and she says the only one she's invited to interview with are the companies where I know someone and let them know I have applied. Now, Eric, you see all these resumes. Do people stand out without that extra call? Like, you know, oh, Eric, by the way, my son's friend just sent you a resume. Like, how do you feel that? Look, everybody, every hiring manager is human <laughs> and is going to be much more likely to respond to somebody they know. This is just the nature of human factors. That It's also the nature of the job market now, and there are many more resumes than there are people, uh, than there are job openings. And finally, to some extent, it's also the nature of how horrible most resumes are. You can oh, look. Oh, that's good. I like it. Very good. And that may be an opening for Matthew, but I can tell you as a hiring manager that I see resumes sometimes in which I can't tell what the person has done. That's absolutely. It's absolutely true. Uh-huh. I mean, that's a that's a major uh, tenet of of what we think of as personal branding is is making it clear. I mean, there's two things going on here. Yes, resumes don't always tell the right story. Um, Okay, there's three things. It's like okay. Monty Python. Um, <laughs> three. There's four things. There's um, there's there's also the factor that um, job descriptions don't always really capture the real story. Sometimes they're uh, sometimes they're an exploratory foray. A lot of times, people, you know, lots of surveys say people just cut and paste those those. They might not really oh, describe the job. Interesting. You're you're applying with it with a with a um, an imperfect tool to an imperfect description, right? in an unknown territory and there's some real advantages to uh to to having an an inside connection that person um just for the company's sake that that guarantee that that little bit of assurance that the fit will be right um makes a huge can make a huge difference it can help to disambiguate both of those hold it disambiguate woohoo mm. there you mm. go is can that, I have a bell for that please how much is that worth no, I don't know that's a five dollar <laughs> word at least uh, here's another resume question is it better to detail your career in a resume sort of like in your general or highlight points that you can elaborate on later and I'm gonna have a, I have a follow-up to that which is is one page still a resume I've seen many multi-page resumes which I think is annoying to me yeah um we would say, rule of thumb, if you've been in the, um, in, in, in the workforce for one to five years, uh, a page is, 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 is correct. For the bulk of, of folks who have been five to 
20. To, you want to keep it to two unless it's a very specialized field where you need to like show all of your publications or something. If you're way up in the corner office and boy, you know, you've, you've, you've got a real gilded career, three pages perhaps, but, wow. um, but there's a structure to this. Uh, just doing a, just doing a list of achievements and leaving it at that is probably not going to pass muster with most. Remember, it's not just human beings. It's software is reviewing this stuff, mm, too. Right, mm. right. Um, here's one from uh, Carrie who says, how do you change your career path? For example, she's been, I don't actually, I'm sorry, I don't know if Carrie's a boy or a girl. So anyway, I've been in the banking industry for years. It's not fulfilling. Eric, isn't that shocking? <laughs> I can't oh, imagine. Okay. No. How does an adult restart a career path that requires additional education, like a teaching job? Don't use my last name. I didn't. I promise, Carrie. But, like, you're in a, a high-paying career, right? You're in the banking industry. Yep. How about, like, are you going to make yourself saleable to an industry like either teaching? And a lot of them, I think that a lot of these people who do this are actually want, don't want to be in, like, public schools. They want to be college professors. Yeah. How do they do that? So it's tricky. I'm, um, I got thrown the curve here that if there is any accreditation that you have to get first, that could complicate matters mm -hmm. um, a bit. You, 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 need, you need to make the time to, to get educated. If you don't, if you don't have the time to, to take off between gigs and, and, and bring yourself up to speed. Other than that, we're talking about transferable skills. I mean, this is, this is, the, uh, this is the mantra of any sort of any sort of change that you want to make. Mm -hmm. um, what's what's at the core? Uh, what's your core value proposition, and how can you bring that from from one one field to another? Mm -hmm. um, if you're really good at it and you're a really good communicator, teaching makes a lot of sense, and you can demonstrate both of those things in an interview. Uh, here's something that's sort of interesting. Uh, here's Shelly who says, I'm a well-seasoned professional. I've been working for five and a half years for a nonprofit. We went through a reorganization over the summer. As a result, I was asked to consider the newly created position of operations director. Okay. Sounds like a nice title. I bet there's no more money with this. Okay. This meant going from a manager of one department to a director of five departments. Wow. Okay. I accepted with the understanding that a pay increase would have to wait until year end for financial reasons. It's now been announced there won't be any increases at all across the organization. While I understand these are difficult financial times mm. and I'm grateful to have a job, I'm beginning to feel like I'm being taken for granted. I'm contemplating asking for that raise anyway, but looking for your professional advice. So promise something, business changes, not going to get it. What do you think? Go back in and say, hey, but you guys said, or, and I'm really great, or what do you think is the tact here? I think it would be good to get it on the record, right, and, and um, put it into your... It sounds like this is, a, this is a generally someone who likes the environment they're working in, mm -hmm. um, who's gratified by the, the new responsibilities, who's clearly taken on a lot of new responsibilities. I think that documenting the fact that at least a conversation was had that this is an extraordinary circumstance um, and getting a definitive answer that that if, if the answer is we're across the board, we are not raising, mm -hmm. trying to set a date when that can be revisited again. Right. So would you say six months or do we have to wait a whole year? I would I would try to do it um, off of the just regular merit increase cycle okay i think these are i think this this well qualifies as extraordinary circumstances mm -hmm. where where you should at least be having a serious conversation with your with your boss about um how they can make you whole uh, as discussed okay i got a good one because i think um eric you might want to weigh in on this one christina has another salary related question What's the best way to explain by why one might be willing to accept a pay cut when taking a new position? Uh, I'm currently employed in a well-paying but dead-end uninspiring job. I've been in the position for five years. Now, I'm willing to take a position that pays less if I feel it's a good growth opportunity for me and a good fit with my skill set. But I can't seem to get interviews when I admit either on the application or in person that my present position pays more. Mm -hmm. And so I'm asking you, Eric, because I'm sure that you get a lot of people who want jobs and you're like, wow, you are like a managing editor. Da, da, da. Now you want this job? Like, 
so I guess the question is uh, that Christine is asking, she's saying, like, look, I, I'm talking about 15 to 20 percent less than what I'm making. She's figuring she'll make it up eventually, but she doesn't feel like she's convincing the hiring or the decision maker that, no, I'm really I'm not just taking this because I don't have a job. I want I, I want something better. Would you believe that as someone who hires? I would in, in my profession. And uh, I would say that if people in the job that Christine is applying for don't get it, it's because they don't understand where she's coming from. Mm-hmm. And if she can convince them that the future is not so bright in being a stevedore or whatever she's doing now, <laughs> and that she really w- would rather be a software engineer um, and lay out the numbers and Department of Labor growth projections, that which should probably win them over. Yeah. It's you, certainly not a bad strategy for a career or an unreasonable thing to ask. I would be very curious to see her, her pitch. Uh-huh. Um, what 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 her what her elevator pitch is now and what her what what the top of her resume looks like. All right, so Christine, if you're watching now, it'd be great. Send us a little like paragraph. We might be able to get Matthew's expert advice right now. Would be awesome. So good idea. Shoot us an email at asktheexperts at moneywatch.com or go onto the website at moneywatch.com and hop into the chat room. We've received a couple of questions from recent graduates. Here's the first one. Uh, by the way. It's pretty clear that every single financial publication says an MBA is worthless right now. I just want to preface this question with the following. Uh, I recently graduated with my MBA. Oh, sorry. That's terrible. Um, Hoping this would be my ticket to a new career. So far, nothing, not even a hint. How can I go about gaining the experience needed to propel my career without having to spend more money on education or workshops? Dreaded workshops. Mm. Where do we go? MBAs, it's like a dime a dozen. I used to always say to people, don't get an MBA, go get a job. There's, yes, um, a slightly unorthodox uh, approach might be to volunteer. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we just had an interesting, I, I participated in a roundtable with, uh, with, with some of the country's leading recruiting industry experts last week. And I actually, I actually asked a lot of these questions of those, of those folks, some of the, uh, some of the biggest names in the country. Um, I said, we've talked about the recruiting industry all day. Let's talk about the job seekers a little bit. And I was, I was surprised and gratified because we've, we've given this advice, but they, they freely um, chimed in with that, with that very advice. If you can find a position that lets you engage, um, that's a... Fr- you know, that's a free, obviously you're not getting compensated, but you're also not paying more money for this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that would be a good start. Now, I mean, I made this comment about an MBA, but it is true, Eric. Like We've even written that MBAs are not really paying off in the way that they used to. So um, we have a question in the chat room who says, can't I command more money if I have an MBA? And the answer is? The answer is it depends on where you get it. And really the credential, if you get it from Harvard, is that you went to Harvard. It's not that you have an MBA. If you get an MBA from Montclair State University. It's Don't just not going to carry. Don't just say like ABC. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, can talk, I can talk about our, my own job. All right. Okay. But so it matters where it's from. Yes. Uh, but even that, there's, you know, a lot of MBAs out there, right? Matthew, I mean, isn't that the issue that we just got a lot of them? We've got a lot of MBAs. I think that um, once again, looking at uh, um, it, it sounds like this person may have been in the workforce before, gone back for, um, mm-hmm. for education. Mm-hmm. Yes. And... Um, and came out the other side. I mean, mm-hmm. being able mm-hmm. to tell a coherent narrative, I think, as well, um, is going to propel. Is going to propel this. I mean, if you can say, I went into that into that MBA program because I am laser focused on blank. Right. Right. My, and- my early career said that, and I I, I made a pivot. Uh huh. Um, this this added some more tools, added some more value. I'm ready to come to work. And uh, here's a question in the chat room from Aubrey about what should I pursue if not an MBA? What's the next, you know, like kind of what's the, what what should hmm. I look at? And we have Elizabeth in in the chat room who says, what about getting a certification in a specific job? So I, the way I read that, and this is just because it's, it's where I come from, like instead of getting an MBA, if you wanted to be someone who wants to be a financial advisor or an investment advisor, or someone who wants to really be a broker, instead of getting an MBA, I would say get a CFP, the Certified Financial Planner designation. It's the same two or three years. You do have to get work experience concurrently. You will not be a CFP without three years of work experience, but 
it is very talk about laser focused it's like that's the laser focus and say you walk into a place and you say i have my cfp i have this education i want to be in the industry of giving advice and i want to do that right. are there other kinds of certifications that would fill that foot fill that bill well certainly in the tech world there's uh there's a whole um there's a whole list as long as uh, as your arm of of certifications that would um that would that would serve that sort of purpose um uh, other finance um other uh industry uh um degrees let's see so there's some there's some project management degrees mm -hmm. um yeah and there's like there's like all different kinds of professional certifications in various careers where it does Absolutely. mean something, right? right. Engineering right. has those kinds of things, right? All that kind of wacky GE kind of stuff that they do. And in some ways, I do think that um, that an MBA can be a little bit of a um, black box. It, it's just kind mm -hmm. of a blanket title, right? I mean, just coming, it's not enough to come in and say, "I'm an MBA." Right. 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 Um, check this out. Um, Oh, here's somebody who says, I understand BCI, BPO Certificate Institute, is offering something, I don't know, something instead of an MBA. I've no, CBOM? I've never heard of this. Never heard of it. All right. Sorry, man. Uh, how about this question? Does age really matter in getting hired? Ooh. Mm. Speaking as the old lady in the room, I'd like to know about that. Got a few gray hairs. I know it, man. <laughs> I hear you. Does age really matter? Mm. It's not supposed to. But it right? does. Not supposed to. Right? I know. I know. Does. Okay. The law, it's not right. supposed to. It's not supposed to. But, of course, we know that it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to think about how, how, you're, how you're tackling these, uh, these, these issues right from the beginning. I mean, how you're packaging yourself. Um, it's just a reality of uh, of the job market mm -hmm. that that coming in and being ready to demonstrate once again that this is an advantage yeah. that those years of experience are an advantage um I was sort of amazed, actually, in looking at the last round of data. I was just doing a lot of research on the two thousand and ten employment data, and that older employees actually kept their jobs. They did better than yep. younger employees, right? So if you were lucky enough to keep your job, generally speaking, the older ones won out over the younger ones, which I'm hoping means that like bosses appreciated experience or were scared of getting sued, whatever. Um, but if you weren't, if you, if you were unlucky, and for example, we have Randy who says, what can you offer a job seeker who's over 55? Are there some specific things that if you're over 55, you're either coming back into the workforce or you've been out of the workforce for a while, what should the pivot point be for that person? What's the way to – what do you say, look, look at all this great opportunity you have to get me. I have all this great experience. I'm not going to get pregnant. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to get divorced. I might die, but, you know, we all might die. But what can you say? Well, you can obviously um, draw on experience. I mean, we, we recommend that you limit the laundry list of history. You know, uh, one of our one of our one of our mantras is leave the 80s out of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Cut, cut your resume back to about the last 15 years. If okay. there's any if you won, if you won the Nobel Prize in 93. Uh, might, might put it on put there. It. Yeah, I, I got think. you. Paul um, Volcker can keep that on. Yeah, that, or something, that's you know. right. Fed uh, Fed chairman. Yeah. <laughs> so um, um, you. So you want to you're, you're going to demonstrate that you've got the experience. Uh, you're going to want to probably um, you need to, in a natural sort of way, demonstrate that you're staying current. Right. Uh, nothing nothing more uncomfortable than somebody who's trying too hard to demonstrate that they're that they're that they're current with the young. They people. want street That's, cred. That, All right. Here's yeah. Daryl in the chat, chat room wants to know if you return to college late in life, should you list your date of completion Ooh. on your resume? So isn't that a great question? That's a great question. So, you know, let's say I never went to college. Or I never finished up. I use this time. I'm 45 years old. I just graduated last year. Hmm. Do I put it? Do I put my date of graduation or not? Wow. I never got asked that before. Awesome. Daryl. Uh, yeah, Way good, to good go. Job, Rock Darryl. on. I think that. Um, I think that you're going to treat that like you would treat your education. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're not going to put it up at the top. Your, I know that you know personally. You're excited that you've completed that, yep. um, that, um, that stage in your, uh, in your, in your education. But I think that you just are going to treat that as you would, which is 
um, you don't put the dates of that graduate unless you're a very young, you're very early in your right. career. You're not going to put your graduation Wait, you mean I should dates. expunge that from my resume? You take that out. I like to use the word expunge because it's fun. Expunge is worth at least uh, five bucks. It would help you disambiguate your it resume. Would. Exactly. And at a pivot point. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, Monique wants to know, is it better to specialize in, um, in, a career, in your career or be more general? Like, should you be as specific as po- or should you be a generalist that's like, hey, I can do anything. Just tell me what you need me to do. You're going to want to find the core uh, I keep saying core, but you, you want to find what's that unifying theme that, mm-hmm. that makes you passionate, right? Yep. Um, now, that could mean that you are ready to switch industries because you bring a um, an operations acumen or something. Mm-hmm. Or you're you're great at you love to solve puzzles, right? And you can show that you can solve puzzles in five different um, industries, but you still got to focus. Um, so the answer is you do need to specialize. You can pick what you want to specialize, what, what, where you want to specialize. Mm-hmm. And that gives you some flexibility. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to jump mm-hmm. around a little bit here. Um, Aubrey says, my boss is very busy, travels frequently. We have a weekly meeting scheduled, but because of his schedule, we only meet every other week at the most. Okay. Okay. So you got the boss is blowing you off just because of travel. I have a yearly review coming up in one month. What should I do to impress him in these 30 short days? It's impossible, right? 30 days? You're not going to impress somebody in 30 days. I, I think that you just need to get your, uh, get your, uh, your, your, your story together about what you've done. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think that uh, bringing a fresh apple to uh, your <laughs> boss's desk every day is going to make a difference at this point. All right, here we go. Uh, John's semi-retired. He's 62. He now a couple of years later, he's interesting for some. Let me do this. Interesting work, quote unquote, interesting work. Okay. Not just a job. Yep. How do you best position that? Like you know, he can. It sounds like the guy doesn't. He's bored, but he's not um, starving. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So what do we do with that guy? Very interesting. Uh, um, I thinking volunteer is kind of an interesting way to go. No. Volunteer work. If he if he if he's not concerned about the paycheck, that's terrific. Mm-hmm. Um, coming in and consulting is a great yep. thing to do. Yeah. Um, you're coming in and you're saying, look, I'm not desperate. I got a lot to offer. Mm-hmm. And I would like to help out because, you know, my nest is empty. I got some time and I want to contribute. Yeah, mm-hmm. I get mm-hmm. that. Uh, let me ask you this. Um, hold on a second. I have another one here. Okay. Online job boards, Dallas wants to know, a good place to look for an executive position or not really? Which Online is the... job, must be like job boards, postings. Is that really, is it a good place? Is it not a good place? Online job boards. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've, eh. we've said, you know, that um, the job boards are, are, are broken. Uh-huh. And, it's uh, it's it's been a mixed bag. Um, the internet has given people immediate access. Yeah. But it's given people immediate access. There's right. There's thousands of you know recruiters don't know what to do with all of this. Uh, there's a lot of white noise out there. Yeah. Uh, here's one for you, Eric, um, from hmm. Patrick has wants to know if you have career advice advice for someone fresh out of an undergraduate program in business, but with very limited real world experience. Okay, I'm finding it difficult to find jobs that don't require many years of experience in the uh, in the field, but I can't get the experience if nobody in the field will hire me. (laughs) So it's like the catch 22. So someone in finance, what do you think? I mean, maybe this is someone who should go into online journalism. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But I mean, what do you think? We can steer people away from that. No, actually, except for those who want to apply to CBS Money Watch or BNET.com. Exactly. The. I would say that a person just out of school and who doesn't have a lot of experience has to underscore the stuff that they do know. And there is a crying need for people who are skilled at a lot of technology stuff, familiarity with programs, software programs that are used everywhere. Um, Proof that you have core values that are not quantifiable by, you know, actual experience or dollar signs that you added to somebody's bottom line, but that show that you have 
determination and reliability and ambition and smarts. Right. And, you know, I'm wondering, do you think, Eric, that it makes sense to just take a job or any job? Like, again, uh, uh, I have a friend whose daughter graduated from a good school, probably going to go back and go to law school, wants to kind of get involved in law. And so I said, well, you know, go be a paralegal. Go see what that beautiful life of a lawyer is like. Do you think that that's okay to kind of take an entry-level job just to taste what the field is like? Yes, I definitely do. Uh, having sampled paralegalism as my, myself is a way to discover that I didn't want to do that. Right. Um, I, I also think as a hiring manager that for someone who doesn't have a lot of experience, if they do have a job, even if it's not in my field, that they decided they don't want it to change or or for whatever reason, the fact that they had an employer, there's someone I can call for a reference, you know that they can show up on time mm-hmm. and uh, act appropriately in an office setting, that's all useful. It's better than a blank space on your resume. It's great. Yeah. And now, what, Matthew, what about if it's not in the field? I mean, what if it's, you know what? Screw it. I don't want to wait for a job. I'm going to go um, pour coffee at Starbucks. Do you think that that's a deterrent? No. Okay. I unequivocally, um, I... I asked these recruiters last week, these are these recruiting industry uh, um, folks, because it's been a theme of mine. Absolutely. You stay busy. You stay engaged. You show that, you're, that you want to get up in the morning and do stuff, um, that, you, that, you're, that you're alive to possibilities and you're active. Mm-hmm. And it, it counts for a lot. Okay. A lot. Okay. Um, question from Steph in the chat room. Oh, this is really going to be dicey. Get on your political hats, men. I recently received a promotion, but not a raise. Another person received the same promotion and a raise. What do I do? Ah, Eric, what Mm. would you do? You're there. You get this raise. You find out that, you know, Jill next door, same promotion. She gets the raise. You don't. What do you do? I would let the boss know that you know it, but not in a confrontational way. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Okay, this is like t- t- talking from like Jill the confronter, but how, how do you do that? Well, one way to do it would be to phrase it as a question. So, so to say, I understand that um, this position elsewhere in the company pays, you know, my salary plus X. Yeah. What can I do to qualify for, for my salary plus X? What's the gap that you would like mm-hmm. me to fill? And then say, and if I fill that, can we talk about this again in six months? What do you think? That's a very that's a very diplomatic and clever way to do this. That is very I must say that is quite lovely because you might be someone like me who'd be like, "Why the hell did that person get a raise and not me?" Which right. is not very smart. I'll admit it. That's okay. So, what if you get the runaround? You go to HR? I mean, you could I mean, let's just say, let me make up this. Let's just say that potentially you're a woman and the guy got the raise. Mhm. Do you now start to squawk or not? I think there's a lot of variables that that you might not be, uh, you the job seeker might not be aware of. Uh, I mean, you don't know where you're. Look where at you that protecting person, the man. Oh my God! But you don't know where that person was starting starting at, right? Okay. Yes. You know, perhaps that other person was getting raised to a place of parent. I mean, I can't tell from the question. Right. I know. Perhaps if if we know exactly what the salary is, then it's then it's easier to it would be a clear cut case Mm -hmm. might be that that other person had been laboring you know underpaid for for years and this was a a chance to bring them up to parity Mm -hmm. uh and and actually we just made it fair so so asking that question that you know what that is what is that that's megan's gong because she feels that we must end but i'm not going to let you go because i have two more questions okay look she's giving me the okay she's chill giving, okay. all right so you're right you need more information let me get to a quick a couple of quick questions here daryl wants to know what are your thoughts on career counselors to help you id your strengths and weaknesses um i sort of think career counselors i've never had one mm-hmm. but i sort of think of it like shrinks there are some really good ones and there's some really awful ones yep what is your thoughts i think you're absolutely right on that I think that having a good third party, an emphasis on the good uh, third party who can who can you can bounce ideas off of, can be huge. It can mm-hmm. be a, a, it, it can make all the difference. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Caleb wants to know, Eric, is social media the only workaround? Like, is that is that like is social media where everything is going to be happening? 
Oh, social media is great. It's one of those skills that you're likely to have coming out of college that your more experienced peers don't have. Mm -hmm. Search engine optimization. Uh, that's another one. Um, so it's not the only place. And we've been talking about finance and engineering and government work. Yeah. But um, social media is a great growth opportunity for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, God, this one's too big for uh, just to get into. It's like, what's the best way to network? Like, that's way too big. But I'm going to point you to Matthew's blog, which that's is um, on moneywatch.com. And, and so, you know, we'll go there. But uh, last question here is from Utterly Confused. After five years in banking, I wanted to follow my passion for financial planning and obtained my MBA in personal financial planning. Number one, utterly confused. I wish I'd talked to you before because that's not really CFP, not MBA. Just remember that. Okay. I now have $60,000 in student loan debt, $55,000 entry-level financial planning position. I've been told it could take five years to make $75,000 plus commissions in this business. True. And in fact, you probably are not, statistically, you're not going to last five years. I feel like I've incurred a lot of debt only to be knocked back a few pay grades. Did I make a huge mistake? Should I get a higher paying MBA related job and do financial planning on the side? Before you ask, $55,000 is barely enough to sustain my one income family. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oh, you really, you're taking that in. I have my opinion. You did it already. Yeah. Suck it up, man. It stinks. I wish you didn't have to make that decision, but I think that if you are passionate about financial planning, you will make more than that. You have to be in a business where you have upside, and you now have a differentiator. You are a planner. You are not a broker. You're not hawking insurance. You are a guy who has something different. You're going to stick with it. I think he's going to be okay. What do you think? I think that's great advice. I think, I think that's great advice. Don't look back. Yeah. Make your wife go back to work. How about that? Hmm. One income family. Um, Maybe the woman is. Oh, maybe me the woman is working, says Megan. Hmm. Or maybe this is the woman and the man's not working. Sorry. Get your husband to work, for God's sakes. Uh, I think that, that we pretty much got through all the questions. We'll get to the networking thing. All right, last thing. One guy says, no, one woman says, Greta says she was out of a corporate marketing, cor corporate job market for five years. She did consulting. It was the best approach to reenter the job market, to do yep. consulting. You like that. Um, what yeah. is the best Give me, like, the two golden tips that everyone can take away from this in terms of, like, their careers. and. Okay, so you're going to you're gonna treat that consulting uh, gig like another spot on your resume? Yes. You're going to take it just as seriously, square it up. You're going to quantify it again. Right. It's not just I hung out and chatted with people. Uh, you know, you're going to have to right size. You're going to have to have a realistic expectation of how that compares to the corporate uh, level that you want to enter. Okay. Right? I, once again, saying I was the CEO of my own LLC is not going to get you into the C-suite at a major corporation. Okay, excellent. Eric, um, you're the guy who looks at resumes all the time. What is the differentiator you want to give as, like, what, what's the thing that you want people to remember? The most important thing you, you need to do is to understand the job you're applying for and understand the company you're applying for. Don't waste a manager's time with an application for something you're just not qualified for. Not, not that ever. That does not happen here. And we entertain all. <laughs> okay. My um, number one tip is to uh, remember that you are selling yourself. And sales is a process. It's not an event. That every single day you carve out time in your career search and within your career you are always trying to make yourself better you are always trying to expand yourself and if you don't have a job you know what get out there and pound the pavement I know it sucks it sucks there aren't a lot of jobs but it's getting better right Matthew it, it, is. it is loosening up and uh, there's no job that's beneath you right no it's 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 a process it's it's demonstrating that you can get up every day and, and do it yeah. And that makes a difference. And, um, you know, we're, like, we're all going to keep our fingers crossed for this jobs report tomorrow. But um, the reality is things are be getting better. They're not where they were. And go out and get something because those 99 weeks can go by pretty fast on unemployment. And mm -hmm. so, you know, don't don't nothing's good. It's easier to find a job when you have a job. Absolutely. Right. It yes. really is. Yes. So, again, as always. Matthew Rothenberg, fantastic to have you here. Thanks so much. I always feel like I learn something when you're on. I really do. It's it fantastic. A, yeah, it was great, Matthew. And, Terrific. Thank um, you. Matthew, uh, remember, he's the editor-in-chief for The Ladders, so go check out The Ladders, and he writes here at Money Watch. And um, I, am, I, I just 
learn as I said, I really I love having you on because I think this is such an important thing that people really understand. Like, you know, we always talk about curating content on the internet. Curate your career. It's yours. No one else is gonna do it, right? You've got you've got one you've got one career. Yep. You're gonna shape it the way that that you want. Right. That's so great. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you. I'm Jill Schlesinger. Eric Schoenberg. And you've been watching Ask the Experts here at MoneyWatch.com. Tune in next week. We'll be back. Who knows who could join us next week? I know we have a guest, but I can't remember who. Megan? Brian Quinn. Oh, Jane Brian Quinn, the Ooh. queen of personal finance, finance, is going to be on next week. Everybody, make sure that you bring your tiaras and wear them next week for Jane Brian Quinn. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Sally. Cue the music, and let's get out of here. Oh